says, how blessed, how happy is the man, the people there. And as we gather together, we, uh, we spend time just uh, enjoying the presence of God and enjoying the presence of each other. So let's, let's uh, start off in, in a joyful time this morning. is beaten, you have rescued me, sing it out, Jesus is alive, he's alive, the empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shout it out, Jesus is alive, he's alive. Come to the well that never runs 
try Drink of the water Come and thirst no more Come all you sinners Come find his mercy Come to the table He will satisfy Taste of his goodness Find what you're looking for For God so loved the world that he gave us His one and only Son to save us Whoever believes in him will live forever Bring all your failures, bring your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son to save us who ever believes in him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated, now it is love, I'm walking in freedom for God so
Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou dost prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord, that you've made a way. You always make a way, Lord. Help us to look totally to you, Lord, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when we fear, Lord, you will just take that fear upon yourself and give us the faith that is necessary to continue to trust you, Lord, to continue to trust you that you do prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies. Thank you.
Says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and convened us into the kingdom of his Son, of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things he may have preeminence, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. Father, we thank you for what your Son has accomplished for us. But we thank you, God, that we are now, Father, one with him. And he lives with us, in us. Therefore, God, we should allow him 
And we ask you to give us that grace to let him reign in us, oh God. That we too can walk and experience that authority that he, oh Father, possess as his body. In Jesus' name.
Say that. Again, hallelujah, one more time. We exalt thee.
Stay in an attitude of worship. Hallelujah. Let Kathy release this word to Gail. Let's just stay in that attitude as we continue to play that song. I hope I don't. So this fall, you know I love to crochet. And the Lord brought something to mind to crochet. And I thought, well, who would I give it to? And he said, just crochet it. I'll show you. And I thought, oh, probably some homeless person (laughs) out on the street. I'll pull up in my car and, you know. And last night, uh, the Lord said, bring it tomorrow. And uh, so I went to get a bag to put it in. And he said, use this bag. And it says, be still and know. I am Savior, I am Lord, I am Prince of Peace, I am King of Kings, I am the Good Shepherd, I am the Alpha and Omega, I am God. Be still and know that I am God. He's been telling you that? Awesome. So, inside is a hat. Thank you. And this hat, the Lord wants you to remember that from the top of your head, he has covered you. And he loves you. And he is your protection. And so when you put a hat on, it keeps all the body heat in, or a lot of it, keeps the body heat in. And he said, so always put your hat on and remember that I've got you covered. And then there's a scarf. And the scarf, of course, goes around your neck. And then you wrap it right over your heart. And it helps keep your heart warm and your lungs and all of that. And he wants you to remember that he holds your heart. And that he's got you covered. So be still. And remember, he's got you covered. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. His love is just all over you. And as Dean always reminds me, God's not up in heaven going, oh, gosh, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> now what am I going to do? You know, he's, he's got it. So. Lord, we just pray right now for Gail. We thank you, Lord, that Gail is in your hands. She's not in circumstances' hands or what she's facing. And so, God, we ask you, we thank you, uh, Lord, for encouraging her this morning. Comforting her and letting her know that you're with her. Hallelujah. That you cover her, that you'll protect her heart, and that you'll guide, Lord, uh, the people that are caring for her. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing that song again. We exalt thee.
You know, I, I love, <coughs> excuse me, I love to look out at God's people uh, when his presence, uh, when he, he's always here, but when he manifests his presence, and you can see the joy of the Lord on the faces of the people. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I see the joy of the Lord all over you, Shane. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You remind me when I was a little guy, my mother used to have prayer at 12 noonday hour prayer, she called it, ever since we were children growing up. And even in the summertime, we were sent outside to play. At 12 noon, she'd call us inside for noonday hour prayer. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Shane, I believe the Lord is saying, to you today. Glory, glory, hallelujah. It, you, not you, but the voices, hallelujah, the negative voices, the, 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 those that the enemy would even use to discourage you. Glory, hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, this is your testimony. You can't make me doubt him. That's a song my mother used to sing because I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. When you hear those voices, you cry out shame. I've got the love of Jesus. I've got the love of Jesus. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Glory, hallelujah. I feel the fire burning. I feel the fire burning. I feel the fire burning in my heart. Glory, hallelujah. I see the joy of the Lord all over you, Shane. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, my sermon today is not Shane, but Shane, <laughs> I see the glory of the Lord all over you, man. There's a joy that's on the inside of you that has never been tampered. Once he's put it in, it's been stamped in there. And you feed off of the joy of the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning, saints. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Saints, bear with me. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you for the manifest, your manifest presence, Father. We thank you, O oh God, because we love in your word where you said you would never leave nor forsaken us. Glory, hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. I thank you today. The Lord, I can look back on this past week and say, you have brought me from a mighty long way. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We ask, O oh Lord, that the word as it comes forth, I believe you've given to me to share. Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, that Michael Keith, the man, would decrease and your spirit in me would increase. Father, let my words be your words. My thoughts become your thoughts as I share this this morning. And Lord, I pray that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, O oh God. Reveal to us, Lord, what you want us to get from this word and the wisdom to know how to apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Man, saints, I'm going to, uh, uh, you got to blame, you got to blame Owen for who you see here. Glory, hallelujah. You got to. Owen said, Michael, be you. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And I get excited about the things of God. This, 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 this is me, Shane. I'm excited when I see someone like this young man, the joy of the Lord all over him. I've heard his testimony. 
Glory, hallelujah. And I watched him live out his testimony. Glory, hallelujah. I get excited. I get excited. Do you get excited, saints, when you watch God transform somebody? Glory, hallelujah. Well, turn with me, if you will, uh, to 1 John chapter 4, beginning at the first verse through the six. There is a word of the Lord this morning. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It goes on and reads, I, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it is coming. And listen, and now it is already in the world. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. We are from God. He who knows God listens to us. He who is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Glory, hallelujah. I want to share with you as we continue on, I love what God is doing as he is unfolding uh, to us the spiritual warfare. Uh, Dennis uh, did such an excellent job last week of sharing about the council culture that we are uh, in today. Uh, you say something, as he shared, uh, somebody don't agree with, they want to counsel you out. But he, but he came to us with a question, can you counsel out Jesus and the kingdom? And I think we all know the answer to that is a uh, no. no. Glory, hallelujah. Well, this morning I want to share with you from this topic. Power from power. And as a subtitle, this very scripture we just read, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Now I want to read for your hearing as well because I, I want to build something up for you and I. You, you see, if we look around, to what's happening in our nation today, and even all over the world. There seem to be things that are going on that to us as we look at it, it's powerful. It's having such a powerful impact. Sometimes we see what's happening and I listen to us and we don't know how we're going to get through it. But I stopped by to tell you this morning about the power from power. But turn with me quickly to Mark chapter 5, because there's a story in here that I want to set up for us as we begin to understand this power from power. Mark 5, chapter 1 begins, he said, They came to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. And no one was strong enough to subdue him. See, if I stop there for a minute, to you and I, that seems like power. But wait a minute. Glory, hallelujah. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him and shouting with a loud voice, he said, what business do we have with each other, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you, God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Jesus, by the way, come out 
of the man, you unclean spirit, and asking him, what is your name? And the spirit of the, and the man said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Listen to this. Now, there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons implored him, saying, send us into the swine so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission, and coming out, the unclean spirits endured, entered the swine, and the herd rushed down to the steep bank into the sea, about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. See, I, at the reading of this, we hear this man was so powerful that he was able to break the chains and the shackles. We can hear this and say, wow, that is a powerful man. That's some power. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. The herdsmen ran away and reported in the city, in the country. And the people came to see what was it that happened. They came to see Jesus and observe the man who had been, listen, demon-possessed, doing what? Sitting down and clothed in his right mind. The very man who had the legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described them, I'm sorry, those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man and all about the swine. And they begin to implore him to, <laughs> to leave their region. Now, when we read this part right here, I got a strong feeling. It didn't matter how crazy and how powerful this demon-possessed man looked. When they came and saw this man straightened out, clothed in his right mind, they heard about the swine, they heard about the demons winning the swine and the swine, they looked at Jesus like, can you go? <laughs> Can you please leave this area? Watch this, saints. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the uh, Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. Listen to this, saints of God. Listen to this. See, we got all these things going on in our nation right now, right? And it's based upon power, but not the power from power. Let me explain what I mean. I went to the Webster Dictionary, and I, I, I typed in rather, I, I got to admit, I didn't go to the dictionary, I went to Google. I used to go to the dictionary until I got, you know, you, the technology hooked me up. So I, I went to Google and I, I said, define power. Here's how Google has defined power. It says, possession of control, authority or influence over others. A nation that has influence among other nations as a, a foreign power. The ability to act or produce an effect, it's in, as in other words, it's in your power to change things. Listen, number four. It said, it's the right to do something of the president's powers, physical might or strength. Now, power, I, I, and because it kept going, I said, well, that's not quite the power I'm looking for. And so I went on and it, it gave me another definition of power. It said, and this talks about power in a person. Watch this, Shane. It says, power is the ability to influence or change an outcome. Personal power is a source of influence and authority a person has over his or her followers. In short, power is determined, listen, by his or her followers. <laughs> when I read these two definitions of power, Colin, it didn't click with the scripture I just read because there was a power that Jesus had that took this man simply by telling this demon to come out of this man. 
But Jesus then, he asked him, and he said to the demon, what is your name? The, 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 the demon responded, he said, my name is Legion, for we are many. And I looked up uh, in, 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 in my Bible and the uh, commentary, and it, and it said that, that a legion was uh, Roman soldiers anywhere from six to 12,000 soldiers. Glory, hallelujah. And, and we could tell that there were a lot of demons in this man because he said he was able to break chains and uh, break the shackles off his feet. But wait a minute. <laughs> he said, Jesus, he saw him far off and he ran up to Jesus and the demon asked, he said, what do we have to do with each other? He acknowledged he was the son of God. Jesus said to the demon, the Bible said, come out of him. And Jesus, when he asked him his name, the demon had to tell him his name. And Jesus, Jesus, watch this. Jesus was so powerful, had so much power. The demon said, hold up. Okay, Jesus, we're going to come out because you, you, you're, you're telling us to. And we, we, we've got to obey you. He said, but, but, but can we go over there and to the swine? <laughs> I can see Jesus in my mind's eye. Go. <laughs> a go. And they went over into 2,000 pigs, and they said the pigs ran off and drowned into the sea. Now, there's a whole other story there we don't have time to get in because the question would be, why did they want to stay in the pig or go into the pigs? Or one, they need to have a body. Demons need to have a body to be able to have some impact into this world. Now, I, well, I don't want to go there yet. So, so they said that after everything that happened, they ran and told the folk, the folk came out. You heard the story I just read, right? They see this man who was living in the tombs, throwing people around, breaking chains, naked, peeling himself, uh, scratching and cutting himself with a, with a stone. They saw him chill, dressed, and in his right mind. Glory, hallelujah. Watch this, because I want to show you power from power. They saw this and realized who this man was. And, and, and judging from the story, this man must have been very well known, right? The whole town came out, and when they saw this, now they got afraid. <laughs> and they looked at who was responsible, and they asked him, you got to go. Can, 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 can you please go? Now, I thought this piece was very interesting for me, too, because, uh, you know, what were they, think about it now. If you knew this dude was crazy like this and you saw all this time and time again and then you come because Jesus' power caused the, the demon to go out, wouldn't you think they would say, wow, what power this man has? That would have been my response. But... This other power is also a very deceiving power that this enemy had, because their concern was more about the economics. See, Jesus, that, that's a lot of pigs, and that, that, that was money. That's what they were more, not that the man was cleaned from unclean spirits, clothed in his right mind. See, that deluding power that had them deceived to be more concerned about their pocketbook than about the power of God. But wait a minute. Watch this. I looked up. I wasn't satisfied, Jeremy, with the power of the two definitions I had. So I went a little further, and I found this definition of power. The Bible de definition of power is it has a deeper meaning. It's frequently used in a book as description of strength of mind, moral qualities of a person, power of her, his or her faith, and so on. It means that this person, I'm sorry, that, that God has, this person, God has entered this inner strength that does not depend on outward things. I got to read that again because I messed that up. Listen to this. The power in the Bible has a deeper meaning than we can imagine. It's also frequently used as description of strength of mind, moral qualities of a person, power of his or her faith. It means that this person, 
<laughs> through God has inner strength that does not depend on outward things. See, the power that I read before, those two definitions, they resulted on the power we give the person, right, that has the influence over us. This power that Jesus has is a power that existed before anything else existed. This power is from God. I want to prove something to us, saints of God, because this power, I believe what God is trying to get us to see, is a power that doesn't come from anything you and I can bring about. We're also not to confuse this power with the power of Satan. <laughs> I remember one time reading, and the Lord was pressing upon me that my people seem to think that Satan is an equal and opposite power to him, and he's not. You've heard me say that, amen? Well, do me a favor. Please turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. I just want to give us a glimpse of God's creative power as I build this thing. Glory, hallelujah. How are you, Joy? You doing good? Yeah, it's good to see you, little sister. Listen, God's creative power. Now, in the public schools, colleges, they're teaching about evolution and, and this big bang theory. And we evolved from uh, fish, I think, right? And the fish crawled up out of the ground. But then when the question goes back further, well, how did that happen? Well, in the universe, just bang and stuff <laughs> began to happen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Saints, we serve a God that makes very clear of who he is. Genesis, I love this, because this should say it all right here. If, if, if you're reading in Genesis in the Bible, and you're asking a question, okay, is, who did all of this? Is there a God? This right here should settle it right here. In the beginning, God. You can close the Bible and then you're done. Because it says it right there, saints of God. In the beginning, God, hallelujah. Now watch this. He said he created the heavens and the earth. They gave this description. He said the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. So if you weren't satisfied with in the beginning God, if that wasn't enough for you, then watch this. Because then it goes on to say, then God said, no, stop, don't, don't read further. Listen to me right, don't read any further. It said, God said. What should that tell you and I right now? That not only was he in the beginning, <laughs> he's got all power because he can just speak it and it's done. Watch me. God said, let there be light. The Bible says, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. Now, we see here, not only was he in the beginning, not only was he all-powerful, but he even named, he's got wisdom that he named what he just did day. <laughs> and then we go further and at night, and that was the first day. I'm going to jump a little bit. I'm going to go all the way down to verse 10, uh, because now we see that there was water. Remember the water, he said, and it, his, his spirit hovered over the face of the earth. Now listen to this, verse 10 said, and God called, oh, wait a minute, back up, because I got to make this in eight. God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, and the second day. Here we go. God said, let the waters below the earth be gathered into one place and let the dry ground, where am I? Let the dry land appear. And it was so. That don't sound like no Big Bang Theory to me, saints. What about you? Huh? Are you with me, saints? 
Come on now, listen to this. Because I want us to get excited because there's a, there's a couple of things I want to show us. And then where does this power, what effect does it have on you and I? But I'm just, I just want to build this power up for you and I for a moment. Verse 12, jump here, says, The earth brought forth vegetations, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. And God saw that it was good. There was evening, there was morning, and the third day. I'm going to jump again because now we, we know about the earth. We know what's in earth and, and the animals and all that. We know that, right? I mean, that's, that's power. That, that, that's some serious power to take nothing and make what we see, and then he creates all these animals. But then, how can I say this? Yeah, it is. So, so, so then God's, I think what he would say, now I'm really going to do something. <laughs> he says here, he said, let us create man in our image. <laughs> Hold up now, time out. Time out for a minute because we know the story. Let's pause there for a minute. Now, now parents, let me see by raise of hands, parents. Okay, so, so, so we know kind of what it's like based on how God told Adam and Eve to multiply and he gave us the ability to have children, to procreate. And you can look at your son and your daughter and you can look and see, <laughs> hey, he's kind of born in my image or she, you know, in my image, you know. But, but back up for a minute because when, when this first came about, God created Adam and Eve. He had the power to form man out of the dust, out of the dirt of the ground, the Bible says. And to watch this power, he breathed into his nostrils, and man became. Was that a chill you were just getting? Oh, I thought you, I thought you was helping me right there. I, when I saw you flex, I thought she was, that hit her like it hit me. Because the Bible said that when he, when he breathed into his nostrils, Man, hallelujah, here he is, man, Adam. But then God goes on to watch the power, the wisdom of God that this man he created, right? He, he, he lets him name all the animals. He brings all of these animals. I mean, that's some serious power. You create something that, that, is, that is from your image and your likeness to the point where you make him so smart that he puts something in front of him and he said, that's a lion. I'll call that a giraffe, uh, an elephant, I'll call that a, and the Bible said, whatever he named, Adam named, it's what it was. But then God said, not that he made a mistake, but he looked, he said, hmm, it's not good that man should be alone, because I'm going to create a help meet for him. And he put Adam to sleep, performed the first surgery he ever performed. He said he took a rib out of his side, closed it up, and created a woman, presented the woman to him. Now, judging from Adam's response, I think he recognized power. <laughs> he knew real power because when he looked at it for the first time, he saw something that resembled him. After all these four-legged beasts and snakes and things that he, he named, he looked and he said, mm, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh she will be called a woman because she's come from man. Glory, hallelujah. That's some power. That's some power, saints. Are you, you feeling me? No, come on, you don't feel me. You feel me. <laughs> Are you getting this for a minute? Let's go on now. Jump ahead a little bit because if we're looking at God's power because there's a difference in the power the enemy had that we saw in Mark, but then we saw Jesus Right, his power, I'm bringing us into the picture here for a minute, but I want to show something because there's so much of God's power. Turn with me to Exodus 14. I want to take a quick look at God's delivering power. Can I hear somebody say delivering power? Delivering power. Mm. I'll take that. That was kind of weak, but I'll take it. Are we there? 
But Moses said to the people, now you know right now they've already, uh, uh, he done took Pharaoh through a trip. Pharaoh was tripping for a while, wasn't going to let him go. God did some things. Pharaoh had to say, all right, go. Take whatever you just get out of here. He was done. But then the Bible said that God hardened his heart. And as they are marching on, they come to the sea. And they got the sea in front of them and the chariots, their <laughs> Pharaoh and his chariots behind them. So here's the scene. Where's my sister Gail? Uh, I, you heard part of this, right? This is for you, sister, because when she read that, I said, oh, Gail, this is who this is for. So now you can imagine, saints of God, uh, and I don't know the time frame necessarily from the time they marched, uh, left Egypt to, to the sea, but I think they were pretty excited. You know, they're carrying all sorts of stuff, gold and things and everything that they need, and they're marching, they're, they're free. They, they get to the rear sea, but then something happens, they look back, and I'm wondering, I can see in my mind's eye, they probably, the ground was probably rumbling a little bit, and there's a vibration, and, and somebody looked back, and they realized that there's Pharaoh and his army. Fear comes in. Glory, anxiety comes in. I think I remember somewhere that somebody even said, we'd be better off back there than to be here and killed. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, Moses, now, I, I, I can't, I, I, listen, uh, uh, who's played sports in here? I've been captain on a basketball team, you know. I, I, I know what it's like to have your teammates, you know, kind of look to your leadership. But I can't imagine Moses <laughs> leading all of those folks out of Egypt, doing what God told him to do. Glory, hallelujah. But when he looked back, he realized that where he just delivered them from, all of a sudden, here come Pharaoh and his army. Listen to this in 13. Says, but Moses said to the people, do not fear. Sister Gail, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again forever. I love this story. Uh, you guys have watched the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, right? You guys said, I mean, that's just the only one that comes to mind growing up. We, we watched that. But even that, even though back then the technology and, and the CG isn't like it is today, still for that time, that was, that was pretty good. The way that they, he split the sea, that, that was pretty good. But it don't do any justice until you read it for yourself in the Word. Watch this. He said, Moses, the Lord will fight for you. Keep silent. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Anybody I hear crying about what's happening in our nation today, I'm going to say, listen, if you're a Christian, shut up. The Lord will fight for you. Come on, somebody. Glory, hallelujah. The Lord will fight for you. Keep silent. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the sons of Israel to go forward. As for you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. <laughs> Hold up. Now you talking about some power. See, there's one thing to be wealthy and have a lot of money, have people working for you and say, listen, take my keys and go over and start my rows or, 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 or go down to my office and tell all my staff to take the day off. That's some power. But this power, <laughs> that God can tell Moses, listen, stretch your staff and split the sea. <laughs> I, I, I can see Moses in my mind's eye, Jeremy, if he wasn't a man of faith. Lord, are you sure? I mean, I, I, I get the frogs and, you know, I, I get the locusts, but the sea? No. Moses was like, okay. Watch this, saints of God. He said here, where did I leave off at? 16, thank you. As for you, lift up your, your staff and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the sons of Israel shall go through the midst of the sea on dry land. Not mud, 
but on what? Not some power. As for me, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will be honored through Pharaoh and all of his army, through his chariots <laughs> and his horsemen. That's some power. That's some serious power. I'm going to make them come in after you. Because you got to realize now, they don't hear this conversation, they meaning uh, Pharaoh and his Egyptians, they don't hear this conversation between God and Moses, right? They show up and the seas divided. But in their rage and their heart and heart, they just going after those. They going after them. They, they getting them back. That's, what's, <laughs> they, that's some power, saints of God. That's some serious power. Watch this. 19, the angel of God who had been going before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. Saints of God, side note. Side note, Christians. Born again Christians. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost Christians. Are you listening? Stop being concerned with what we're seeing and what we're hearing. I heard Catherine say, Dean teases her all the time about, oh, God didn't see that coming. He, right here, do you see how he protected the Israelites? Even in, the, in this point, he's got a cloud of fire in between them while he has Moses splitting the sea. God got their back. God got our back. Glory, hallelujah. But I haven't gotten there yet. We, we're going we're gonna to get there. Let me jump in here. So, so let's get up to the point where the sea has been split because I want to talk about this power that sends them in. Now, first of all, he said that they're going to walk across dry land. So not only does he split the sea and there's a wall, and I'm only basing on what I saw in the Ten Commandments because, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't imagine it except that we've seen that image. So you got a wall of water and dry land where the water was. Now, I don't know how old that sea was, but I think it would have taken longer than a period of time for that to dry. But when God said they can walk across dry land, he made it dry imme immediately. What power? Can somebody say power? power. Mm. Now, 23, then the Egyptians took up pursuit. <laughs> and all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen went in after them into the midst of the sea. Now, one thing I do remember in the movie, The Ten Commandments, if you can remember when the, the Justin and Chariots, when they were riding, remember they were looking up like, <laughs> yeah. they weren't sure. That had been me. Because yeah. I'd be like, King, are you, are you serious? But watch this. Because I love the power of our God. 24 says, the 23, the Egyptians took the pursuit and all the uh, Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen went over them into the midst of the sea. 24, fire and cloud, I'm sorry, at the morning watch, the Lord looked down on the army of Egyptians through the pillar of fire and a cloud and brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. He caused their chariots' wheels to swerve. <laughs> See, they didn't show this in the movie. And they made them drive with difficulty. So the Egyptians said, let us flee. Somebody has some sense. Let us flee from Israel, for the Lord is fighting against the Egyptians. Why we should have been worried about uh, conspiracy theories and all these other things, there's somebody that's watching uh, that Christian in phase three that's saying, hey, we can't go against that God. <laughs> so whatever is happening, God wants us to happen, and we should just rest with that. Come on, somebody. He is bigger. Hallelujah. Listen to this. He caused their chariots. Oh, we read that. 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots, and over their horsemen. I don't know about you. But if I was following that king, and now I see the water coming down, I'd have been like, man, for real? 
I'm listening to you. Now I'm about to drown because I didn't believe in their God. See, God wants to show himself mighty in us saints. So somebody would then say, because watch this, if you don't believe me, watch the rest of the story or the end of the story. 29, no, 20. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them. Not even one of them remained. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land and through the midst of the sea and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead in the seashore. When Israel saw the great power which the Lord had used against the Egyptians, listen, the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and his servant, Moses. Now, how could we have that testimony, those of us who have the power, this same power, this power that raised Jesus from the dead, this power that God had used throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, how can anyone have a testimony like this about us if we're acting like the God we serve has no power? While I was doing this, uh, praying through this, because I want to just give us one more, couple more examples quickly about God's delivering power. You know the story of the three Hebrew boys. King Nebuchadnezzar uh, built that temple, or uh, 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 that statue of gold. And after the big announcement, musical announcements and the proclamation, and everybody was then to bow to this God. But then there were three Jewish boys. I believe we can say they were in phase three of spiritual warfare <laughs> because they refused to bow before this God. And Nebuchadnezzar, after finding out, brought them before him. <laughs> and the enemy would do this to us, saints, if we're not careful. He'll give us a couple opportunities to sin. He'll make it real clear. He'll, he'll tempt you, and you kind of get past that one. But then he said, okay, all right, let, let me hit them with this. So the king brings Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Abednego. And he said, Abednego, Shadrach, and Meshach. He said, listen to me. He said, now I understand that uh, you aren't going to serve and worship my golden God. Uh, listen, he said, I'm going to give you an opportunity because I, I kind of like you. I, you know, I, I like you guys. You know, and uh, so when you hear the music, I want you to go ahead and worship. Now, let's pick up the story right here at verse 28 in Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar responded. He said, blessed. No, 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 no. Don't, don't start there. Don't, don't start there. Don't, don't read that yet. I, I got to tell you the rest of the story. I left it out because I wanted to tell the story. I didn't want to read. I just want to tell you the story. Then we'll read this part. So don't read that. Thank you, Marta, or who's ever using that. <laughs> so the story goes that they did not serve. They said to the king, oh, king, we don't need to answer you in this. He said, because our God will deliver us from the fiery furnace. But even if he don't, see, we got to get to the point, saints of God, that, that even if it looked like I ain't going to make it, you got to be like them. They said, but even if, he said, our God can deliver us from the finest, probably friends, but even if he doesn't, he can certainly deliver us out of your hands. The king was hot. He was mad. Hey, fellas, light that furnace up. Make it seven times hotter than it is, normally is. They bound them up in their clothes, their pants, their cloak, they bound them up. They got their, the Bible said they got their, 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 some of their warriors to throw them into the fire, and they even got consumed. That's how mad he was. That's how hot this fire furnace was. Threw them in. And all of a sudden, the king says, hey, didn't we throw in three men? And I can, I can see in my mind's eye 
the accusers of Daniel, uh, of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, I can, I can see them saying, oh, king, come on. Where are we threw three in? Nebuchadnezzar says, but wait a minute. I see four men walking around untied. He said, and one of them looks like the sons of the gods. And now let's pick it up at 28. He says, Nebuchadnezzar responded and said after he called them out of the furnace. And here's interesting. I love this part. Because when they walked out, uh, I love, uh, we have a fireplace at our, at our crib. Never had a fireplace before. And my wife will tell you, I'm like the fire starter. I love, I love starting a fire. And after I'm done, I can smell it, you know, on my hands. And I can smell it on my clothes. But these dudes was in a fire, I don't know, probably, what, 100 times hotter than my fireplace and they said not even the smell of smoke was on them. Not a head, okay, not a hair on their head was sent. <laughs> Somebody got that. Not even their clothes were even touched. And listen at the king's response. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who put their trust in him violating the king's command and yielding up their body so not to serve or worship any God except their own God. Does anybody have that testimony about you? Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or tongue that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn from limb to limb and their houses reduced to rubbish in as much as there is no other God who is able to deliver this way, then King caused Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. Let me ask you a question, Christians, if I may be so bold. Is the United States any different? Huh? Can God do anything in the United States? Does it matter who's sitting in a White House? No. See, God wanted to show himself so strong in us that we are praying, that we're believing and trusting in him, that even the very president or whoever's in will say, you know what? We got to do it like these Christians are doing it. We can't keep doing going against their God. Come on, somebody. One more story. Can I tell you one more story about God's deliverance? Let's quickly look at Daniel. Daniel, they were so jealous of Daniel that they got together, the other uh, uh, priests, uh, uh, satraps, and whatever they were, uh, uh, counselors, got together. They listen, we, listen, the king likes Daniel, so we, we know that. But here's how we can get him. Let's get him based on his God. Because so they knew that Daniel prayed regularly three times a day. And it wasn't just a routine. It wasn't a religious a thing that Daniel was doing. Daniel was living out what he was praying three times a day. So they came up with a scheme because they knew Darius loved, he, 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 he really loved, I believe, Daniel. Why? Because they, when they came up with this decree and they puffed him up and he kind of went for it and he said that nobody can, can pray or to anything, anybody, but, but, but you, you know, oh Darius. And they wrote it up. They wrote a law. They made the law. And he said, according to the Persians and Medes, when, when a king makes a law, it can't be broken, right? King was all set. Daniel heard about it. Daniel was like, oh, no, it's time for me to pray this morning. Daniel went on to pray. Went on about his business. It came in the afternoon or sometime to up. Uh, not time for, my, time for me to pray. Daniel goes on to pray, pray, like he normally does, going about his business. Uh, Oh, yeah, time for my third prayer. Let me go ahead and get this done. Lord, in the, in the, he praying. They see it because he doesn't do it. He does it right in the window. And they see Daniel praying. You know what they say? We got him. <laughs> we got him. They go tell the king, oh, king. And then they puff the king up. Oh, king, live forever. Um, uh, we, we, you, you made this law, king, and uh, nobody can pray or do anything. It's, uh, it's up to you for 30 days. Yeah, that's right. Well, Daniel, King, I got to tell you, this dude ain't listening. He's been praying 
three times a day. The Bible says that Darius gets a little distressed because he realized, oh man, I didn't think this through. Daniel does pray to his God. Daniel loves and trusts his God. His God is real. But I can't break this law. I can't even break my own law. Daniel has to go into the lions. And the Bible says that all night, Darius stays awake, doesn't eat. He brings no pleasure to himself. But early in the morning, hallelujah, the Bible says he runs to the den. And we'll pick it up there, verse 7. No, we won't. Verse 25, because Daniel now at this point, Darius runs, he yells out to Daniel, say, Daniel, did your God deliver you from the lions? And this should be our testimony when we accuse of something. Daniel said, King, it has been found that I have not offended you or guilty to God or you, King. Daniel uh, Darius, he goes on and then he says in verse 25, then Darius the king wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language who were living in all the land. May your peace abound, he says. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom, men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel and his kingdom, for, uh, for he is the living God and enduring forever. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. And his dominion will be forever. Watch this. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So Daniel enjoyed success in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Somebody ought to say power from power. I'm going to skip because we're running out of time, but I, I want to look at this right here. Where do we come in? Well, let's look at God's saving power. Romans chapter 5, 6 through 21. You know, I can imagine that if someone's listening to these stories, and I know I may have been a little, you know, had a little animated to it. <laughs> well, that's Owen's fault. He told me to be me. Uh, and they may listen to the story and may not really think, oh, come on now, is that really? Is that for real? I would encourage you to read the word for yourself. For I, lo I love movies, Joy. I love, especially like today. See, when I was growing up, we thought special effects back then was tight and all. Special effects today are incredible. But there's not one movie that I've watched that can touch the very true things from God's power that I read in his word. Can I get an amen? amen. Romans 5, 621 says, for while, for while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man, someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. In that, I was just bragging on technology saints, and my thing disappeared. Here it is. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it again. Yeah, right. Amen. Here we go. It's back. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I was skipping. So everything that I skipped popped right back in front of me, and I... Okay, Romans, here we go. Got that time? Could I have about eight more minutes? Is that all right, saints? <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear that. <laughs> 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 all 
I can always come back next week and finish. I, I, re, I remember <laughs> growing up and uh, you've been to a black uh, Pentecostal service and you hear the preacher. He has about eight conclusions. <laughs> an hour and a half later. So I, I promise you, you give me eight minutes, we'll be done in an hour. So, um, I didn't get that pass. I thought I was going to get that pass. You. So real quick, here we are. Romans, uh, where did I leave off at? But God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For while, for while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Uh, it, it, my point here is this is the saving power of God's love for you and I. 12 says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all have sinned. Let me jump down to 15. Listen, but the free gift is not like the transgression, for by the transgression of, of the one, the many died. Much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man who? Jesus Christ abound to many. 18. Jump. So then, through one transgression, there resulted condemnation to all men. Even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. And you know that saying, make a long story short, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Real quick now, power from power. Here we are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody? Yeah. All right. So now watch this. Jesus said in Luke 10, 17, this is after the 70 ran back to him that he had sent out. All right. They were all excited. And they said, even the demons tremble. Uh, no, he said, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus goes on to say, uh, 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 18, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that your spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Glory, how to, so it doesn't matter if we're registered as a Republican or a Democrat, and our name is down. It doesn't matter if when they took a, a census and our name was written as residents of Manchester, New Hampshire. But what matters is that your name is written in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to skip to my last scripture. Acts 1, 1 through 8. Here's again power from power. The first account I composed, Theopolis, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but listen, but wait for the, what the Father has promised. For then, because you remember before, <laughs> yeah, you remember before, when, when, when he said that he had to go, right? He said, I must go, but, but, but he said, I will send you another comforter. 
Glory, hallelujah, which is the Holy Ghost. Here he is. This is Jesus. He said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or epochs or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. I looked at that definition, the Greek word, because uh, I've never seen anybody do it as much as I've ever seen Owen uh, and can pronounce these Greek words. I can't pronounce them, but this is one I was easy for me to do. And this power is dunamos, where we get our word dynamite from. This is a power, saints of God. It's not from anything that you and I can, can generate. It, there's nowhere you can go and get this power. That there's no, there's nothing, there's no, I'm not a scientist, but, uh, but there's no chemical uh, uh, equation or anything like that that this power comes from, but Almighty God. And I thank God that because of his son Jesus, that even though Adam and Eve messed up in a garden and we were all born into sin, but, but because God so loved us, he, through his son, created the gap that we can be reconciled to him, or rather close that gap that we may be reconciled to him. And even more than that, that we get filled with his Holy Spirit, endowed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear us say at the top of our lungs, power, power. from power. From power. Hallelujah. can believe that. And so we thank God for this wonderful grace. At this time, we're going to have the breaking of bread. And we're going to just look at this scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start at 23, but I just wanted to say from verse 17, it talks about the church having some schisms. And Paul addressed it. It was very important for him to address because what was happening is that people were not being concerned about others. Somehow there was selfishness that was starting to take place. And people would come in and they would take their food because the Lord's Supper was a time when people would come together as a church and they would eat and they would have breaking of bread. And they would take the food before the other and they would drink before the other and then some wouldn't have. And I'm, we're not dealing with that because this church, I don't see the same thing in this church, but I think in our hearts sometimes there is things that we go through and we become very selfish in our own thoughts and our own ways and our own actions. And I think that's what God is challenging us today, to, ch to check our hearts. How much have we allowed things to dominate in our lives that are not Christian-like? And I think that's what God is after today. And so if we could examine our hearts today, just Ask the Lord, Lord, show me, is there anything there that I need to adjust, that needs to be changed? Sure. And so far, we have come before you and we examine our hearts today. Thank you, Lord. We 
church is not divided. You are the head and we are the body. And so in verse 23, it reads, For I received from the Lord what I have delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new co uh, covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim or declare the Lord's debt until he comes. And then it continues, it says, whosoever eat unworthily. And so as we pray, and we ask the Lord to examine us, we also want to ask the Lord to forgive us. If there are things that you see in your heart, there are things that God has revealed to you that needs to change. There might be things you might have to do afterwards in reaching out to somebody if you have in some way had any issue with them or in some way have some malice. But at this time, God wants you to know that his blood, if you confess that sin, is able and is, and is delivering you from that bondage in the name of Jesus. So, Father, as we come, we give you thanks for what you have done for us. For the fact that you gave your body on the cross and you shed your blood for us, O oh God. We thank you that that blood sanctifies and justifies us. And today we can declare that by your blood, as we acknowledge what you have done, that you have justified us. It's just as if we have never sinned. And Lord, we thank you that you have sanctified us also by your blood. And we declare that by your blood, Lord Jesus, we are sanctified. Set apart unto you, Lord. Not apart unto something else or unto some ideology or some area of, whether it be political jargon, whatever it is, Lord. But we have been sanctified unto you. We've been set apart to you today. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, and the people said, Amen. Amen. Take the bread and eat it. The body that was broken for us to preserve us unto everlasting life. We give you thanks, Lord. Take the cup, the blood of Jesus that was shed for us as a new covenant. We do this often as we do it, Lord. We do it, not in remembrance of anyone else but you and what you have accomplished. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you, Lord, that this new covenant includes healing. This new covenant also includes your provision. And we thank you as if we have done this, Lord Jesus. Your promises are yea and amen. And we receive your healing, your provisions, your grace, and your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, amen. At this time, we're going to ask Curtis to come. Okay, if we can prepare our hearts for our tithes and our offering. <laughs> well, Father, we thank you for today. 
Thank you for your goodness, Lord. We heard about that, Lord, in one of our worship songs. Your goodness, Lord, and your faithfulness. And we just want to give back to you, Lord, what you have provided, Lord, our tithes and our offerings and our gifts, Lord, as you gave the greatest gift to us, your son, Jesus Christ. And we just ask your, your blessing, Lord, for your kingdom, for your name, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. And while they're doing the tithes and offerings, a couple of announcements. The first is that the women's Bible study will be starting again, and that is March 14th at uh, 5 p.m. They're going to be studying the book of Colossians, and the one who will be um, doing that, her name is Ruth Cho Simmons. And again, they will be studying Colossians. Um, the second is a coordinating effort by, um, for meals for, for Gail. And Rebecca will be doing that. And uh, if you have any questions, if you would contact her, and, um, and she would tell you what needs to be done. Again, we need more volunteers and training for our tech team. We thank the tech team for what they have been doing, but um, we still need some volunteers for that. And we also need uh, greeters as well. Our prayer and fasting will begin this week, Monday. It will be at this building at 7 o'clock. And Tuesday and Wednesday, it will be on Zoom. Thank you. So, Lord, we just want to pray for Tower Hill Church. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would uh, anoint them with your power and that they would uh, see your power in in. In their ministry, Lord, and not just on their own uh, abilities, but on your ability. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless them, overwhelm them with your uh, presence and your power to be a light in their community. And Lord, I pray for that too for us as we enter, as we leave today, that you would just remind us, Lord, that with you, all things are possible, and that same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. And we thank you for that, Lord. Surrounding me, I can. 
conquered our enemy. No power of darkness, no weapon prevails. We stand here in victory. Greater is he that is living in me. He's conquered our enemy. No power of darkness, no weapon prevails. We stand here in victory. Victory. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us. Lives in us. Uh, just a, a, a quick announcement of concerning the prayer and fasting for tomorrow night. Uh, depending on weather, because we are supposed to be getting a storm starting tomorrow afternoon all the way through Tuesday, so depending on how much snow we get. Um, if we have to cancel it from here, what we will do is we'll set up a Zoom meeting, and we will send out the Zoom link uh, through the church email so everybody can have it. So just, um, if you don't get the Zoom link, it means... It's here at 7 o'clock. All right? Amen.